Hello everybody, Nathan Ware with Rain Networks. Thanks for joining me today. We're gonna to kick off another video series here today. Uh, this time we're gonna be doing a video series on the Viper Endpoint Security Cloud Edition. If you've been following our YouTube channel recently, you know we just finished up a, a video series on the Viper Endpoint Security Server Edition, which is the on-premise um, solution that Viper offers for security software. Uh, this cloud version obviously is managed through the Viper Cloud Portal online. You don't have to have a, um, a machine internally with the, uh, the management console loaded. It's all hosted by Viper. Very nice, clean solution. It's a very, they did a very good job with this. They released this in uh, 2017, and we've had a bunch of clients that have purchased this and uh, lots of happy customers uh, with this. So we're going to do a multi-part series on how this works, some of the different features that are that are available. It's got uh, it's got some cool stuff with it. Uh, when you first log into the cloud console, you get this dashboard uh, that you're seeing now. It's a really well laid out, very well designed dashboard. And I'm going to get into this later. It's actually one of the last things I'll talk about. I'm going to kind of work this backwards. Um, so what we're going to start out talking about is agents and policies, because obviously you're going to load an agent on all your computers. And one of the things that you may decide to do is make a custom policy to apply to those agents. Now, some of you may skip this step, and that's fine, but it's probably worth understanding how the policies mechanism in the Viper Endpoint Security Cloud works, just so you're aware of it, just because it is kind of a functional component of this system. So over here on the left menu here is kind of your main navigation, and I'm going to go to policies. And up here at the top, is your default policies that Viper gives you out of the box. So you're gonna get a default policy, you're gonna get one for laptops, one for workstations, one for servers. Down below, you can make your own policies. And what they do is they show you the different modules that are within the policies. So these different modules are these columns right here. So you've got the scan module, the active protection module, the browser module, the email module, the firewall module, and the IDS module. The IDS module is kind of a kind of a child module of the firewall, which I'll get to in just a minute. So if you say to yourself, hey, I have no interest in making my own policies, um, any custom settings of policies, nothing, no problem, you're good. You can use all these default policies up at the top to apply to your computers. But if you want to make your own policy, you can click on the add policy button up here in the upper right, Give it a name here, okay? And boom, we are into the policy creator. So as I mentioned, those different module sections here are highlighted over here on the left. So let's say I wanna make a special browser protection rule. Um, I can go in here and I can change the settings for browser protection or the email protection setting. You know, maybe I don't want Viper to integrate with Microsoft Outlook. I can just uncheck that and then Viper won't in integrate with Microsoft Outlook. Um, a lot, probably the most common settings here are firewall and IDS. Um, you know, some people don't run the firewall protection if they're on a corporate network because maybe they run some software internally that they are afraid their security software would block or whatnot. So there's kind of different philosophies on that. And um, when you have the firewall added here, you then kind of have the responsibility of maybe making, you know, port rules or whatnot that uh, maybe you're going to allow things like remote desktop in your network. So some people would just say, hey, I don't want to have to mess with that. I'm just going to leave the firewall module out and just depend on Windows firewall. Sure, that's fine if that's the direction that you want to take. Different, different strokes for different folks, no problem there. Um, but this is where you're going to configure all of this stuff in here. So each one of these has their own kind of array of settings in here. For 90 plus percent of people, the default settings are um, are sufficient. You know, we have. I, I guess if we had 100 clients by Viper, probably 95 of them would not mess with these settings, but there would be five that would, and they would do so for very um, important, distinct reasons for their business. So it's good to know about these. So anyways, this is making a custom policy. And so if we hit create policy up here in the upper right, 
Okay, you'll see there's my test policy for today that I have created. It shows the four modules that I've activated in my policy. I did not turn on firewall and IDS. Okay, and it says here that I've got zero devices uh, right now using this policy, which is true because I haven't I haven't loaded this policy on any machines yet. So I bring this up because it now takes us into the de the deploy agent section. Okay, because that was the kind of the starter here that we wanted to start with is how do we actually deploy our Viper, our Viper cloud agents. So over here on the left, we're going to click deploy agents. Okay, and if I just want to download the base installer with a default policy, all I have to do is click def download Windows agent installer and it's going to download the basic Viper install package with just the default Viper policy. So remember how in the policy section, there were those default policies. All right, so if I click this, I'll begin that download process. But over here, I've got create policy installer. So if I said, hey, I wanna make a download package that uses my test policy for today policy that I made earlier, okay, I highlight that, I click select, and now Viper is creating me a custom agent installer using that policy that I made earlier. Why is that important? Because maybe inside that policy I made, maybe there are some custom settings that I really want the user to have um, when I install this agent on that user's computer. I want, you know, maybe a specific uh, email protection rule or whatever it was. So now here's that, that policy. I can click on that and Google Chrome will now start downloading this as an MSI which I can now take over and load on that person's machine or set up a group policy in my Active Directory to install this software. Okay, so this is how you deploy agents. Pretty simple. Okay, so I can get the default policies here. Over here on the right, I can do create a policy installer if I want to um, use a custom policy that I've created. And then the third option is I can send email invitations to people here okay I can put in email addresses and select one of my policies here and I can now email somebody um, a link to download Viper so maybe you have a user that you feel comfortable allowing them to download and install Viper on their own just email them a nice welcome email here and they'll be able to do it on their time whenever it's convenient for them all right so we're gonna end video one right there um, We've gone through policies and deploying agents. And in the next video, we're gonna get through how to make exclusions, how to use the dashboard and some of the reporting mechanisms in the Viper Endpoint Security Cloud. Okay, thanks for joining us and uh, stay tuned for videos on the uh, exclusion section and the dashboard later on.